Okay, we're live and uh, welcome every, everyone. My name is Stuart Harris uh, from Biz TV Online and uh, Biz TV Online is a regular weekly series that we'll be running uh, from now on and we'll be talking to um, various interested guests from uh, different types of businesses both offline and online uh, and uh, they'll be discussing with us how their business operates, what they do, um, how they can help people and how they can help you. Um, my guest today is here from uh, a company called Self-Employment Mastery and I'll be introducing uh, our guest shortly. And the topic of today's uh, Biz TV Online is profit success for your business with purpose and pride and results. Um, but what I want to do first up is perhaps just discuss uh, very quickly the whys of uh, Biz TV Online and uh, how that concept could be universally useful for something, somebody like um, self-employment -mas self mastery. So the first question is why Biz TV Online? And uh, other than the the obvious, which is it is a, um, a TV program which is which is online and, and free to air. Uh, Biz TV online is going to be promoting businesses that would otherwise not have access uh, to a normal TV channel or um, uh, broadcasting facilities, which, as you know, are, are really expensive. You know, it's it's too difficult for a company to take advantage of that. Well, through Google Hangouts, this has all changed and. Uh, by virtue of providing this channel, I hope to not only help many businesses uh, get the exposure and engagement that they're looking for, but also uh, you know shine a light on on this type of activity so that um, other channels can develop as well and and um, other businesses can can work this channel to their own advantage. Now the next question is why me? And uh, I've been involved with business for well over 30 years. Uh, most of that's been in the IT sector, and a lot of it's been um, revolving around sales and marketing, and more recently, online marketing. So there is a wealth of uh, business knowledge that I can bring to the table. But more recently, in fact, in the last three months, I've been involved with a program called the Hangout Marketing Challenge. And the Hangout Marketing Challenge is uh, about utilizing the Google tools of Google Plus and Google Hangouts. And through that challenge, I've been able to place myself uh, at the end of the challenge in the top 10 on the leaderboard and in the top five on the coaches leaderboard. So those are pretty massive results on a global perspective. So that gives me, um, and hopefully you, some um, amount of credibility that, that revolves around what I'm going to be doing here with this particular program. Uh, why now? So uh, why now is, is particularly interesting because uh, the Google Suite, as I call it, has really morphed in the last 18 months into something that is quite uniquely special and is really what I would term right at the very beginning. It's right at the crest of the beginning of a big wave uh, of change on, on the internet and online. And I believe that um, Google has managed to put together a culture and an intent that's going to make it uh, worthwhile for pretty much everyone, whether they're online or offline, whether they're big business or small business. And uh, what I'm talking about with the Google Suite is uh, the um, Google Search Facility and YouTube, which of course Google owns, and these are now the two largest uh, search engines by volume on, on the internet. And we, we pretty much all know that, but you probably didn't know about YouTube. Uh, and also the other facilities are Google Plus and Google Hangouts. And by virtue of uh, this suite, I I'm saying that Google is now in tune with the requirements to operate business online, um, not only for those uh, whiz kids or, or specialists or gurus that know how to use 
the online uh, marketing concepts and, and leverage it very well, but also for those who don't know it very well. And I'm talking about novices, small businesses, and anybody else that, that can get in. So as Google is in tune, um, I also think that because of this environment, they've created a very collaborative um, situation. And uh, part of what we're doing here now is, is, is demonstrating that collaboration because we're going to be engaging people that probably wouldn't normally engage uh, in the normal scheme of things. So this is a very collaborative situation. Uh, there is lots of um, uh, examples of how the, the collaboration works and I'm not going to go into all of those at the moment but you'll, you'll see if you go and check out Google Plus and Google Hangouts you'll find a, a lot of things uh, working to your favor. Now also just through the intent and the culture that Google has put in place particularly based around their semantic program, the semantic being you know uh, about what people are genuinely talking about. Um, there is a, uh, a trend of authenticity that's moving through this environment and what this does is it keeps the, um, the platforms more focused on uh, a topic, a niche or a particular authority or expert. There's not the flip-flap of stuff that comes through and, and clogs up these places like you would find perhaps in Twitter and in Facebook. It's very genuine, it's very authentic, uh, and, and it's creating a very good uh, environment in, uh, in the Google suite. Uh, to the extent that we have what I would call uh, an enablement um, situation. Now enablement is not a word but I put it here on this piece of paper. It's, <laughs> it's not in the English dictionary so don't go and look it up. Um, but enablement is something that I'm that I'm coining here because I think that's what's uh, really working for uh, many people that have that have discovered the Google uh, suite, that have discovered Google Plus and have discovered Google Hangouts. Uh, they're going to find that they can enable their, their situation and they can move it forward into something that's going to leverage uh, some pretty useful growth in terms of uh, whatever it is they're doing, whether it's online or offline. Now, my guest, I think, in terms of his business and what he does, is uh, very much synergistic with this. And I, I have to admit to have met him, have met him in the Hangout Marketing Challenge. Um, He's uh, very, very much a highly commended uh, gentleman and invaluable in the sphere of self-employment, uh, small business and entrepreneurship. He's an author and a coach and a mentor and a consultant and he's spoken live in over 30 countries. Uh, so I'd like to welcome along uh, Brett Jarman. Uh, welcome Brett, how is it down in Byron Bay this evening? Hey Stuart, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's much the same as it would be on the Gold Coast, hot and steamy right now, but very pleasant. Yes, so um, as you've probably worked out, uh, we're not too far away from each other. In fact, uh, I think it's only about an hour and a half, and uh, mm -hmm. Byron Bay is definitely a beautiful sp spot in the world. Uh, Brett, if we if we can just uh, focus now on, on your business. Um, what is your business and why is it important to your clients or um, interested parties? Sure. So what, what my business is, Stuart, it, it, it's actually a whole lot of things. Um, if I was to condense it into one thing, I would probably call myself a strategist. I, I help people with their business strategy. And the way in which that manifests is depending on what, what a business's need is and who they are, what their style of working is that depends on how I, how I would be working with them. So I might work in a, in a consultancy fashion or I might work with them in a coaching fashion. really depends. Most of my work at the moment is probably coaching. Um, I do have a group coaching program. We, we get together once every week and we sort of talk through situations that my clients have with their business. But I also coach and consult one-on-one -on -one with different clients and also with groups of clients. I, have, um, I do a lot of work with non-profit associations so I'm working with uh, industries on industry strategy. So, yeah, that in a nutshell is what it is. Why it's important? Um, well, I guess, you know, because it, it helps people get over the roadblocks, uh, find uh, the key phrase that I use is finding the path of least resistance. That's, 
that's the thing that I'm always trying to do with my clients is where are you now, where do you want to be? Okay, let's work out how can we find the path of least resistance. So, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, look, it um, sounds really good too, um, Brett, because uh, there's so many little businesses out there that are that are struggling and um, finding it difficult, particularly in in our neck of the woods, as you're as you're aware. Um, what what are some of the problems that your clients are bringing to you uh, currently, and and how are you dealing with those? You know what, probably the, one of the most common threads that runs through most businesses, not just the small ones, but even with the big ones, is that they're too overwhelmed with information. Um, and often that's conflicting information. Uh, there are so many experts available to us and the internet and, and Google, God bless them, they've made so much information accessible to us that now people are getting to the point where they go, ah, my goodness, what do I do with all this information? This person tells me to do it this way, this person tells me to do it that way, and this person tells me don't do it at all. So, so that that's one of the biggest things that I find I'm dealing with with, with clients is sort of um, helping them filter out what's relevant to them, what's not relevant to them, um, what can be applied to their business, what's totally irrelevant to them, and so on. So I'm, I'm there as a sort of a a, a, a neutral observer. Well, not neutral. Obviously, I've, I've got a stake in them growing, but I don't have the same emotional state that they might have. So, yeah, pr probably overwhelm is, is the biggest thing that I think is a, a problem for businesses big and small. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, um, one of the biggest things that gets affected by overwhelm is productivity. Um, you know, uh, people focus on the wrong things, they get uh, waylaid, and they also get uh, substantial distractions, um, which affect how they, they're prioritizing elements of their business to make them work. Um, if somebody was starting to use your uh, service uh, today, um, what could they expect to uh, achieve or what sort of results would they be looking at, say, in three months and six months and, and 12 months' time? Well, Stuart, obviously that depends on where they're at in their business journey. With some people, I find that there's actually not a lot that's really in the way. There aren't some huge roadblocks. There's just a couple of small things that we need to tweak or, or even a couple of major things, but we were able to tweak them pretty much straight away. So uh, probably the best result I've had is I had one client. She was, she was doing very well for herself, but then when we tweaked one thing, it was a mindset issue. Once we tweaked that, within three months, she'd tripled her income. We didn't change her marketing strategy. We, we just literally changed her and her demeanor and how she was relating to her clients. Um, so as I say, that was, that's probably the best result I've had, but not all clients are like that. A fairly typical journey that they go through is the first three months, there's a mixture of relief and absolute fear. So the relief comes from, as we sort through the overwhelm and we we sort of dust off all the bits that aren't relevant and discard them. And we start to give them a picture of what's really possible for them and what they can achieve. That's when the fear side of things starts to kick in. So, oh, wow, really? I didn't envisage that for my business. So, uh, and that comes with the clarity side of things. So getting rid of the overwhelm. Excuse me while I turn my phone. That's gone. Um, so... So th there's clarity that comes with getting rid of the overwhelm and a bit of uh, relief, but also some fear. So that's the first three months. And then the, the second three months, we're probably getting into action Jackson mode. mode. Well, we're into action Jackson mode fairly early on, but now we're starting to see some results. People are starting to see, oh, okay, uh, if I do raise my rates, the world doesn't end. You know, my clients do still want me and I can do it in a way that's elegant and authentic. Uh, if I try this with my marketing, I, I actually do stand out. I do look credible as a business person. So the three to six month stage is really uh, quite exciting to uh, to sort of witness with clients. And then after that, where we we start to sort of get momentum, we're looking at optimizing the business. And then usually, sometime between the 12 and 24 month stage, what I tell my clients when they sign up with me is I sort of look. Our goal is to make you an overnight success in 12 to 24 months. So forget all your 
stories about you know something going viral and you can make a fortune within six weeks. If that happens, great, we'll take it, but that's not our strategy. Our strategy is within 12 to 24 months for you to have a solid business that you can count on and that you can rely on for the years to come. That, that sounds really good. When, when I started uh, out uh, soon after university, um, one of my first businesses was a supermarket um, and they had um, a concept which is called store blindness. And oh, yeah. I've, noticed, I've noticed over the years that store blindness is something that pertains to just about every business. Is people don't see things in their businesses that are either not being done or not working or interfering with operations and the like. Um, do you get much of that in that first three months? Uh, probably not. It's not a um, not a concept of sort of come <clears throat> excuse me come across so much with my clients. They're more in a in a state similar to what you were saying before, where they're very busy. They're in busyness, B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S. -S -S. They're very busy, but it's not necessarily productive and quite often not profitable. So, and that, the being busy, it's actually a way that, of, for them to calm themselves. They think, oh, well, if I do all this stuff and I'm being busy, then I'm actually being a business person. So it's a way of... Uh, calming themselves, justifying their um, their actions and so on. So I don't think it's, um, yeah, I, I've never thought of it in terms of store blindness, but, it, but I will, you know, in the weeks and months to come, I'll give that some thought and see whether that's a phenomenon that's quite common. Sure, yep. Now, um, I, I quite often like to go down to Byron Bay and um, I know the Byron Bay Blues Fest is coming up in, in about a month's time, but one of the issues uh, we have getting into Byron Bay is, of course, that road and it gets all blocked up. Um, what are some of the roadblocks that, that some of your um, clients run into when they start up and, um, you know, how do they overcome some of these problems themselves while they're working with you? Uh, probably the biggest thing, I, as I said before, is the information thing, just working out the how to sort through the conflicting information, work out what's relevant, work out what's not relevant, and then sort of put together a bit of a plan based on that. So that, that, that would be one thing. Another thing would be uh, overcoming the need to know all the detail. Um, we've heard so much about business planning and all the serious people in suits say, you know, you've got to have a plan, you've got to have a plan which is sort of true. I, my favourite saying around that issue comes from uh, Dwight Eisenhower. And this was before he became president of the US when he was a general. He said, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. So by all means, go through a planning process. But you, you've got to know that straight away, you know, right from day one, the details on that plan are going to ch change. So you don't have to be too attached to it. And you also don't need to know everything about it. And so what what I find is people they're afraid they're afraid to take the first and second steps because they don't know what the fifth and sixth steps are going to be, and I always just say look the easiest way to do that is to take that first and second step that's going to take you much closer to where you are, and you'll be in a better position to evaluate then exactly what it is that you need. So th that I think is the major roadblock. Um, confidence is one for people, and in my first session with all of my clients, that's one of the things that I actually try to hammer out of them. And, and I'm usually quite successful at it. I said, look, I actually don't care about your confidence levels, whether they're low or high, or how much experience you've had, that's really not relevant. Um, because at the end of the day, it doesn't take confidence to take the steps that you need in business. All the confidence does is make you feel better about it. So the way that we're gonna do that to, to make you feel better about it is we're gonna put you in there, we're gonna make you take those steps, or you're gonna take those steps yourself and that confidence will evolve. But don't sit around waiting for the confidence to arrive or develop or thinking that you're going to get more information for that to develop. It's not going to happen. Yeah, totally, totally agree. I've, I've actually got a little mantra that I, uh, that I use, which is um, uh, start often and start immediately. And yes. I, I know they're, they're very basic, but... Um, you know, if when I apply that and keep that circulating, 
any distraction I get, I just go back, start again, start immediately, yeah. get it going. Yeah. You know, particularly those tasks that you you never really want to, um, that you never really want to do, but you know you have to do uh, to make things make things work. That's right. Um, one, one, of my, one of my favorite sayings on this comes from a guy called Taki Moore. He's a he's a, a marketing coach from Sydney, and he says, "Don't be perfect, be prolific." Get it, get it down, get on with it, and move on to the next step. And don't yeah, that, that's a guiding. Don't be turf, don't be perfect, be prolific. That's awesome. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make a note of that one. Don't be perfect, be prolific. All yes. right, now yes. we've um, we've bulleted some strategies on on the event page. Um, do you want to take us through some of those, starting with the first one? Yeah, sure. So the uh, so the first thing that uh, first sort of strategy that I, I work through with people is to get them to relax about business. We do take business way too seriously and when you're working for yourself, you, your business and your home life, they become so enmeshed that you can't afford to really take it too seriously. And what happens is, as I said before, we, we, get, we, we indulge this busyness and we end up working much harder than we need to as a way of calming ourselves. And so what I say to people is just forget about that. Forget about the working hard. Let's start to work smart. And there's a few ways to do that. So the first one is don't try so hard. We think that if we work harder, the results will come to us easier. Now, in my experience, and I've been self-employed for 30 years in a whole lot of different spheres, there have been times when I've worked enormously hard. Now, I'm not afraid of hard work. In fact, I, I, I quite like it. I, I like a, a working up a good sweat and working hard. But sometimes it can be counterproductive. And especially you know, when you're working online, if you're working in a creative field, working hard, it, it does start to work against you. So just sort of relax. Uh, as I said before, you don't need to know all the details, so you can relax about that. Just let the details take care of themselves, or you take care about them as and when the need arises. And sometimes that even involves getting some help. If you don't know what you're doing, Find out. Ask someone who's done it before or ask someone who's an expert in that field. Get them on board. Get them to help you with the details so that you're not uh, frantically trying to educate yourself and skill yourself up and run a business. Now, education skilling up, it, they're something that you do all the time, but sometimes we take that to a, a level that just is not necessary. And then the other part of that sort of relaxing framework is don't make it about you. With a lot of us, when we're in business, there's, there's actually an underlying, um, there's an undercurrent of trying to prove ourselves in one way or another. And I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. One of my sort of fears about myself, I, I value competence very highly, and I always try to come across as being competent in business and in life. And any time I feel that I might come across as incompetent, that for me is like a red flag that's a big threat to me. And one of the tools that I use for that is information. I'm all constantly gathering information, trying to find out how things work, what makes this happen and all that sort of stuff so that when a situation does come up, particularly with my clients, I'm able to answer that and I'm able to address it because I've got information, got research or, or experience that helps them with that. But what I noticed was, and this sort of happened probably around about this time last year, what I noticed was I was actually getting quite anxious about the level of information that I had. And whenever the information was coming to me, I would get anxious thinking, oh, wow, there's something more that I don't know. I've got to get more. And the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And so I had this undercurrent of trying to get, just prove myself, get as much information as I can, try to appear as competent as I can, and it was taking the fun out of my business. So don't make the business about you. Make it a creative expression of yourself, but don't let it define you or uh, determine your character, so to speak. So since I had that insight, it's made a huge difference, and, and I, I share that with my clients. So that, that's one of the sort of first major things that we look at. The second thing uh, I sort of look at with my clients is to get them to make a mind shift away from problem solving. As business people, and especially when you're running a business yourself or you're managing a business, 
you're constantly in problem solving mode and often that mode can actually take over the business and I, I, an analogy that I use for that is weight loss we hear about people who go on diets uh, they'll lose weight for a short period of time and then the diet sort of fades away and then before they know it they've, they've poured the weight back on again they go on another diet lose some weight and pour the weight back on again now 99 times out of 100 I can guarantee that the people who are doing that they're on the diet because they don't want to be overweight so they're trying to solve the problem of being overweight and that what, what happens is that focus keeps bringing them back to the problem they lose weight their motivation diminishes the habits creep on and then they're back to square one again the problem literally owns them now for those one in a hundred people who do escape from that cycle, get out of the yo-yo diet and actually do make some incredible gains in that department, what happens with them is they've made the decision to be healthy. So they're not problem solving, they're creating something. And in making that decision, that's what drives their choices on a day-to-day -day basis. When they see the second serving of dessert, they say, you know what, that doesn't align with what I want. I want to create a healthy body for myself. So one, one helping of dessert is fine one or two glasses of wine is fine, they make choices. Uh, I'll get up and exercise, that aligns with my, my choice. Whereas getting up and exercising, it doesn't really align with the problem so much. Mm. Now in business, how that manifests is, and especially in self-employment, this is a real big one, people say, I want to be self-employed because I want to be my own boss. Now again, 99 times out of 100, what those people are actually saying is, I want to be self-employed because I don't want a boss. And the reality is, when you are self-employed, you've got to be a boss and you've got to be on your toes because if you're not, then things can fall apart. And ultimately what ends up happening is your clients, in, in a way, they're your boss anyway. So if you think you can escape having a boss, it's not going to happen in self-employment. And so these people who have gone into self-employment because they don't want a boss, that's the problem that you're trying to solve. And th the problem itself is kind of solved from day one. As soon as they become self-employed, their motivation diminishes straight away because they think, oh, well, I've achieved that goal. And so now there's nothing constructive that can come of it. Um, so that's what I mean about getting out of problem solving and getting into creative mode. And so the third part of the framework is, is literally that, setting up a creative framework, a creative uh, structure that you can work towards. Now the, the, the model that I use for this comes from a guy called Robert Fritz, he's written a couple of books, uh, one called, well he's written several, but there's two in particular that I refer to, one is called Creating and the other is the term that I used before, the path of least resistance. And so what he says is forget about the problem solving, just be clear about what it is that you want to create, what your desired state is. Now a lot of us are quite good at that. We're good at setting goals, we're good at creating vision boards, visualizing, meditating, creating videos, getting a clear idea of what it is that we want to create, but then the next part of that process is where they fall down. Because what, what, what Fritz says is set up your desired state and then get clear about what your current state is and then you the, uh, he doesn't call it a gap, but the, the, the force between those two states is structural tension. It's literally like gravity that sort of pulls you towards that state. But where people fall down is in their description of their current state. And so uh, what the, the current state needs to be evaluated in relation to what the desired state is. So in business, for example, before I mentioned the issue of confidence. So I might say, I want to build a chain of hairdressing salons within five years. I want to have 30 salons around the country. That's, that's my goal. That's what it is that I want to create. My current state in relation to that might be, uh, I'm currently working from home and I, I go out to my friend's house and, and I'll, I, I do their hair at home. I'm, I'm running a mobile hairdressing service. So that, that, that is a very basic description of those two states. But what someone will then do is then they'll overlay their current state with a story. They'll say, 
oh, I've had no experience, or I don't have the confidence, or I don't have the resources, I don't have the money. These things, they're not really accurate descriptions of what the current state is. And that's what stops people, is they get caught up in the story, and so the tension can't really get set up, set up correctly because the story is what's holding people back in their, in, in their current state. So those are probably the, the three sorts of, the three basic tools, the three things that I'll work with clients on at, right at the very beginning. Uh, so we're setting up that structural tension and then we, we'll, we'll map out a plan. Usually it's just a, a one-page business plan and then we start taking the action steps that we need to move that forward. That that sounds awesome, Brett. Thanks for that. Um, one of the one of the things that I did struggle with in, in my own business life, particularly when when I was running the supermarkets, was um, being able to aim for the desired state because there was so much happening and going on. Um, it, it was very difficult to keep where I wanted to go in focus and not get absorbed by. Um, all, all the noise, shall we say? Yeah, um, yeah. Then problem solving. That's it. Yeah, you, yeah. You, put, you, constantly putting out fires. Yeah, putting out fires. That that, that yeah. describes it perfectly. And it took me a long time to understand the other the other aspect of that, which was um, the Pareto principle, which is the eighty twenty rule, yeah. of course. And once I discovered that, if I just focus on the twenty percent of activities that generates the most uh, outcome or the most um, revenue or whatever it was that 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 twenty percent was was driving towards that I found the other eighty percent tended to take care of itself yeah um, and also I mean I was in, I, I guess I was fortunate because I had staff around me but um, when I realized that if I surrounded myself with staff uh, that was complementary in terms of their skill sets, that also freed up a lot of my my time as well. Now, not everybody in self-employment has that capacity, especially right at the beginning. Um, but the, there are definitely, um, you know, uh, elements of that which which resonate. And uh, you know, I, I just find that once people become aware and they absorb those concepts, um, then then it all starts to gel for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. Now, in terms of problem solving, I, I'm very um, nervous about saying to people, you don't have to problem solve because ultimately there is an element of problem solving going on. Um, but um, I think I think you've got the message across, but do you just want to delineate between you know, what's normal problem solving and what's un unnecessary problem solving? Yeah, yeah. The, the, like there's obviously you know, day-to-day -day problems that do come up, and I'm not saying ignore those. So, you know, if your hard drive on your computer craps out, that's a problem that you've got to solve. But the, the actual framework for the business, what I'm saying is don't, uh, don't make the business an avenue for resolving w your big problems in life. Use it as an avenue for creating something, for, uh, for something that inspires you, something that uplifts you, something that you'll be able to stand back with a sense of pride for having created it rather than for a sense of relief for having avoided it. Now a really good example of this is people who go into business to, you know, they grow up in a, in a, 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 let's call it a poor household, a household that doesn't have a lot of money. And at some point as they're growing up, they may make a vow to themselves, I'm never going to experience this. I'm going to make sure that I've got as much money as I can. I'm going to set myself up. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be successful. And often these people, they do go out and do that. And they're incredibly successful, but they end up being so miserable because their, their accumulation, it's all about being trying to resolve a problem. And, and, and they'll get occasional uh, sort of feelings of relief, but they just don't have that sense of satisfaction, that sense of um, that deep feeling of, satisfaction that comes from creating something and, and quite often they'll be doing th there will be something else that they would rather be doing they might be thinking oh I'd love to be an artist or a musician or whatever I would love to be helping people with disabilities that's what I would really love to do but if I do that then it's going to take me back it, it'll be like my household when I was growing up and there wasn't a lot of money 
And so that's that's the distinction I'm saying is don't make your business and your work a, a an avenue to sort of solve the big life problems. By all means, tackle the problems as they come up. You know, when your hard drive does crap out, you want to be in a in a sort of a, a reasonable state to deal with it, rather than that being another problem that's on top of your already uh, deep problems that you're dealing with. Yeah, and um, look, so, some of the um, issues arise because people have not really found the business that they wanted to be in in the first place. How much of that do you find? Oh, I've, I've found it with myself for, for 30 years. Uh, it took me probably... It, actually, you know what? That's not quite true. When I was younger, um, so when I came out of school, I was working in uh, theatre, and then I ended up working in television and film. And I had like 16 years, fantastic career, absolutely loved it, went to see all sorts of different places. Um, and, and along the way, I, I owned another couple of businesses while I was doing that as well. So I was definitely in the groove at that point. But then when my, my children came along and the hours just weren't conducive to raising a family. So I left that and I kind of went into this sort of hibernation phase. Um, I'm a bit of an introvert and I try to avoid crowds and sort of being out there too much. So I, I was always looking for businesses where I could get to be by myself. Um, so for example, I, I had a, a, a screen printing business, you know, just doing t-shirts from home. And I thought that would be ideal. I just have to go out you now once every couple of weeks to markets and sell them online and that would be fine. The rest of the time I get to spend at home. So that for me, that was me trying to solve a problem of not wanting to engage with the world. <clears throat> so the um, so it was through a series of um, experiences in business that, that have led me to where I am today. And they weren't always pleasant. Some of them were quite tough. And it was me sort of ducking and diving, avoiding the stuff that I really wanted to be doing, the stuff that my soul was calling me to do. And then opportunities were coming up, you know, things like, I remember in 2000 and five or six, there was an opportunity to speak at a conference in Egypt. And I was absolutely shitting myself at the prospect. But in my heart of hearts, I knew that it was something that was, that, that I had to offer that particular audience. It was something I, that I wanted to say, that I needed to say. And so I pushed myself through all these sort of, um, uh, all the doubts that I had about that experience. And I took it on and I did it. And as it turns out, it was a woeful presentation. I, I did a, I, I botched it up pretty well, but even so, people still came up to me afterwards. They were appreciative of the information and they wanted to know more. I got some great relationships from it. So, yeah, the the, the thing of working out what it is that you want to do, it, it's, as much as anything, Stuart, it's about getting out of your own way and sort of uh, working out what it is that you're trying to avoid, what stories are you telling yourself to... Um, to keep you away from what it is that your heart's really calling for you to do. Absolutely, and uh, look, I can relate to um, a first up speaking event that goes um, not so well, so I think we all experience yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, um, you know, I think uh, you've got a lot to offer your clients and, um, and any interested party. Um, I think they'll get extreme value from, from what we've heard tonight. Uh, where, where can uh, they go to get access to, to what you're providing, either in, in coaching or mentorship or, or any services that you're, you're providing, Brett? Yeah, thanks, Stuart. So, so the easiest way, I, I presume it's showing up on the screen there, is on my website, brettjarman.com. If you jump on there, there's a couple of things you can sign up for. I've got a productivity six-pack, um, and, and I think you can just sign up for updates in the top corner as well. So that's one way. Um, if, if they go to that site and go forward slash sole operator, that can take you to through to Amazon where my book is published. I've got a book there called Sole Operator, How to Be Your Own Boss and Build a Business with Perfect with with, with Purpose. And that's a great way for people to, uh, to find out a little bit more about how I think, um, how I approach business and, and what I might have to offer them. But yeah, first port of call, brettjarman.com. And yeah, hopefully it's the, the start of a long and uh, fruitful relationship. 
It's good. Now, look, I, I can't actually see it on your um, bottom third, so I'll just put this up here, Brett. Oh, okay. German. Com. And now, it may be just the way I'm seeing it, Brett, so I'm, I'm just making sure. So, Brett with two Ts, jarman.com. I've, I've written right. that very quickly, so hopefully people can see. Thanks um, so much, Stuart. Now, we have got a few viewers, so I just see there may be um, maybe a question. Uh, no, there's no, nothing there, and I'll just quickly have a dive out and... There doesn't appear to be any questions at this point. I, I have to admit that I forgot to put Q and A on right at the start. So, oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> buttons to push, and, and this is what I mean about um, allowing ourselves to be imperfect, not concerning ourselves with all the details, and you know, just make things up as you go along. So, yeah, and it, it, it's great that we're able to do this. Yeah, no, it's 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 been very enjoyable. Uh, I've written a few pieces of paper and they've all fallen on the floor. So I'll just run through these. We talked about um, the path of least resistance, and I think that's pivotal in terms of uh, really streamlining what you're doing in uh, in your business. Um, yeah, and I'll just add to that, Stuart. Most of our resistance comes from the stories that we're telling ourselves, and and that for me is the biggest thing with coaching is helping people get over their stories. Absolutely, it's all all what's going on up there, and and unfortunately, it does that to us right to right to the very end, doesn't it? I mean, it's how we deal yeah. with it, isn't? It? Okay, the next one is uh, don't be perfect, be prolific. I think that yes. was that was a very poignant uh, comment. Um, keep the focus on uh, the desired state, and I think that sort of encompasses all three of the strategies. Um, because we're talking about working smarter, not harder, and focusing on um, the the, um, the the twenty percent of what we're doing that gives us the impetus to go to our desired state. And um, there it is. Don't don't work harder, work smarter. Um, but do that by creating a framework uh, that Brett can help you with. Brett Brett is. Uh, Clearly, got the the experience and the competence to to set that up. And I think if you go to his website, there's a number of testimonials there that vouch for this. So it's it's definitely um, something that that Brett is capable of doing in a very big way for you. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, Brett, do we want to round out with uh, a final word? Is it is there anything you want to add at this particular stage? Uh, what would I say? To that. No, I think we've pretty much covered anything. There's nothing that rolls off the tongue right at this moment. If I keep talking, something might come up. But no, Just keep doing right. what you're doing. Uh, right. Have fun. Have fun. It's all right. Have you got a, a final word? Do you want to think about that while I um, I put up mine, um, which is. Um, I'm going to say enablement. I know it's not in the dictionary, but I think everything about what we've discussed tonight, particularly with um, how Brett can help you with your business, is completely about enablement. Yeah. So my word would be create. Create. Yeah. Yeah. Just make that make that your your reason for being in business and good can't word. Can't go wrong. Yep. Create, and that keeps you on your your desired state, your desired focus. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, look, th this has been uh, really good, Brett. I've really enjoyed this one tonight and um, appreciate you coming on with us. Um, hopefully we can do this again in the future sometime. But uh, look, I, I wish you all the best. And uh, by all means, everyone, please go visit Brett's website, brettjarman.com, and uh, you will definitely get the goods there on just exactly what he can do for you. Hey, thanks so much, Stuart. I really appreciate it. And yeah, hope, hopefully we can do it again sometime in the future. Awesome. Thanks very much, Brett. And we're going to close off the broadcast now.